Oh, this is a setup to test the uh, what you call that the frequency response of the spring. So here you have an oscillator, and then on the other side a spring. So this oscillator is going to cause vibrations, uh, and the vibrations will cause the spring to oscillate. It, you will see how later. The amplitude of the vibration produced is constant. The variation with frequency of the amplitude of the metal cube is shown. So this cube is going up and down uh, at a certain amplitude. Okay, this is our resonance curve. <laughs> State the phenomenon illustrated in 3.2. When you see this, you should already think of oh, resonance. So you just say resonance. You may say, Miss, why not damping? Like, cannot see damping. Uh? No, no, no. Damping is the graph we saw just now. A graph over time. You lose energy over time. But this is amplitude against frequency. So you're looking at a totally different phenomenon already. Resonance. Okay. So you just write it resonance. Next one. For the maximum amplitude of vibration, state the magnitude of the amplitude and the frequency. So you're looking at maximum amplitude of vibration. So you look here. Where is maximum? Here, this peak here, and where does that occur? This would be 16, I think. And what is the frequency? Somewhere here. This is, wow, I can't really see. 4.246. Because this is 5 already. Ma. Okay, so we're going to write down what we see in the graph right here. So amplitude is 16, 2 SF, oh, okay lah. Frequency is 4.6. If you get both correct, give yourself an A1 mark for accuracy. Let's continue. The oscillations of the metal cube, 150 gram, may be assumed to be simple harmonic. Okay, we assume simple harmonic. Which means all the equations for simple harmonic motion we can use now. For sure can use. Use your answers to determine for the metal cube the maximum acceleration. Whoa, whoa, what is maximum acceleration? For simple harmonic motion, acceleration is negative omega square x, but we can ignore the the the, the negative for now because we don't care about direction. Lah. So this is how we're gonna start off with. But also, what is x? Ah? Where does maximum acceleration occur? Hmm, I don't know. You look out and see. Maximum acceleration occurs when you are at the amplitude. Or what the books call x naught so we need to do that low x naught also what is omega 2 pi f right so you need to do 2 pi f square times your amplitude lah. so let's do the calculation 2 pi frequency is what ah did we find the frequency yet have we found omega yes we have previous section eh, here frequency is 4.6 so let's use 4.6 here square times the amplitude which is 16 millimeters so 16 times 10 to the power negative 3 there we go okay so multiply everything we should get 13.37 meter per second square can round off la 13.4 or 13 i'll just put 13.4 three marks all oh, where does that come from first one Belief comes from your equation here. This one. Do you know how to find acceleration? Then you sub correct value, that's another one lah. Then the final answer here. Okay. Next, the maximum resultant force on the cube. Well, if you already calculate acceleration, then you can count the resultant force because you know the acceleration now. So net force equals to, you can use a variation of Newton's second law to find the resultant force. So the mass is 150 grams, right? Yes, they give to us 150 kg times the acceleration that you found earlier. Wow, then before that, wrong now. Then you wrong here. Your final answer, you will lose a mark. So let's use 13.4. And you get... 2.01 Newton, which is also 2.0 Newton. Two mark. Wow, very generous. Le. One here, one here. Okay. Some very light feathers are attached to the top surface of the cube so that the feather extends outwards beyond the vertical side of the cube. The investigation is now repeated. On the graph just now, draw a line to show the new variation of frequency 
of the amplitude of vibration for frequency between 2 and 10. What feather are they talking about? Well, imagine this thing is going up and down, right? Now they go and put, I don't know, feathers like this maybe, like wings. So what does that change? Not, not exactly the mass, but it does change how much frictional force this cube will be experiencing. Okay, feather, ma, okay, the wind will blow against it. So, uh oh, we have damping now. That's what we call some significant damping. So how would you draw the curve? There are a few characteristics you want to take note. Okay, first thing is the amplitude will not be as big when there's damping. Okay, uh, by the way, this I'm going to draw this line here so we can see. So our peak has to be lower, low, so maybe something like this. And also, your line must be generally lower than the previous one. So the points come from first one. If your line is below the original and never zero, that is the first mark. A second mark comes if your peak is at a slightly lower frequency, at 4.6 hertz or lower, and flatter, the peak is flatter. So lower, low, flatter. So that's the two ideas you see. Before that, frequency is 4.6, but uh, your, your new peak has to be at 4.6 or a little bit lower. So I prefer to do a little bit lower, because once you have damping on, then your frequency will decrease a bit. Ma. So that's why I shift that. So you draw something like that. La. Okay, so that is the end of these two questions.